Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. I have another video for you. I know. If you see me wearing the same shirt, it's because it's all filmed in the same day, so don't judge. I've been wearing my pajamas all day because I feel like bumming out. Haven't been really working today, so, you know. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was an orchid that I actually got from the latest Orchid Society meeting that I was at uh, Wednesday of this week. We had our annual, we call it a repotting party, which is basically just people who don't know how to repot orchids get a chance to experience repotting. And the nice thing was, the lady who set it up, which was Roz Greenberg, one of our members, she set it up through Carter and Holmes. And they supplied us with roughly over, I think it was 30 or 40 orchids, uh, from one for each member, maybe two. Um, they were anywhere from Cattleyas to Cattleya hybrids, Brassavolas, Bandas, Species Phalaenopsis, I think Cymbidiums too. There's probably some that I'm missing, but other than that, I mean, Carter and Holmes was very generous. They also supplied us with the plastic pots, tags for each of the plants, and potting medium to use to put the plants in if they need to be repotted. So that was great. And I was really happy about that. And actually, I ended up helping people more than I actually helped myself. So I should have really kind of helped myself. But I felt that new members might want to know how to pot plants or choose a plant that would be really easy to grow or something they're used to. But while we're in here, um, what I'm going to talk about first is the plant that I got. And I'm going to grab it. And here it is. This is a species, or a direct hybrid species, of a Phalaenopsis. Because I've been holding it the entire time that I was talking to people, trying to explain to some of the newcomers that, you know, fowls are pretty easy if you're used to growing a Phalaenopsis like you'd buy at the store. These are pretty much the same way, except they just like to be a hair a bit warmer than the other fowl, than the hybrid fowls that you get from the grocery stores or Home Depot. Um, I repotted it today into a, a square food-grade container with holes in it. Um, I didn't like the fact that it was packed in sphagnum moss. I really didn't, and I don't. I have. I'm so leery of leaving them where they're, where they are when you get them. I'm so leery of the potting medium of what it's in, unless I've seen it. So, but this one is really pretty. It actually has, if you can see it, I'll try to get it in here. Here, it's got a pink lip and then a greenish white flower, like petals and sepals. It reminds me of a Sideria japonica. It's not fragrant, but I'm, I mean, these are supposed to be fragrant. This is a... I'm going to be backwards because I'm using the front camera. So I'm going to just... It's a Phalaenopsis called Tetra Green. It's a Tetraspis Falling Stars by Fal Green Jewel Ken's Classic. It's beautiful. A beautiful plant. Very healthy, very robust. The, the, the roots were very healthy when I unpotted it. Um, but it just kind of reminded me of a Sideria japonica, so it was great. Plus, with species fowls like these, or direct hybrids, they are sequential bloomers, so you don't cut their spikes off because they may bloom again later on the same spike, so you always leave them on. Unlike uh, hybrid fowls you get from the supermarket. And let's see what else we got in here that's going on. Oh, because of um, Karina, she's been growing that Brazilian, uh, basically that... Um, tree that I got from Puerto Rico. Well, I want to show you the update on mine. This is what mine looks like. There's a comparison to my hand. It's got all these new branches and leaves, and I did actually hack this back, and there, you could probably see where I hacked it if I turn it a little bit. Right here is where I cut it. It was growing from here, and I wanted to give it a new lead because it was really looking kind of crappy, and I repotted it. So I think what happened was it didn't like the repot into pure sphagnum moss. I wanted to try just growing it in pure sphagnum because it didn't get enough water. And I know these trees grow in the tropics, and they enjoy a lot of humidity and water. So I planted it in first sphagnum moss, and it's doing very well. It's got a huge canopy on it. It's pretty neat looking. Here's a pen just kind of for comparison. Really nice plant. Easy to grow. And it grew right from seed. Oh, man. Um, another reason why I wanted to come down here, too. I mean, I don't think I have much else really going on in here, except for maybe... Uh, let me see here. This is a, a division that I made of a bigger plant that I got. Another one I got from the Orchid Society. This plant here is a Mildontis, a Mildontis, I want to say Mildontisidium, Super Spot Everglade. Uh, it's growing new roots. It has a new 
a new pseudobulb growing from the two back bulbs that I had, and it's doing very well. And hopefully it'll have much more to go. Uh, my star fruit, oh man, he's a beast. I pruned it way back. I mean, it was about this much taller than what I'm showing you, and you can see how big it is here. I'll hold it back compared to me. It was much taller. I cut it back again, put it in a larger pot because it was outgrowing its other container. This plant right here, especially grown from seed, is a fantastic, if you're growing a fruit tree from seed, I really suggest you grow a star fruit. They are excellent and easy to grow from seed, and they really are tolerant. They do drop a few leaves here and there, and they get kind of fussy um, about humidity. But other than that, if you prune them, if you just prune them and leave some of the leaf stems on, grow right back. No problem. Oh, and the other thing too, because I know that uh, Lynn from uh, her channel, and, uh, Growing Succulents over there. Lynn, I'm sorry. Like, I, my mind, like I was busy all day, so I forget. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting your channel's name, and I'll put it in the description below. But I, Oh, Heart Full of Happiness. Aha! Aha! I remembered! Whew, I was going to get really embarrassed if I didn't remember. So, Lynn from Heart Full of Happiness. Now I remember. Peace. See? Peace. I'm not turning around, because if I turn it around, it's, it's completely different. It means a whole new meaning. So, I don't want to do that. Um, this is more geared toward those who grow succulents. This is a jade plant, and I was growing this from a cutting I made from a, a branch from a big plant at work. I planted it in pure sphagnum moss in a bonsai pot. You can see that I trimmed it, and this is all new growth on the top. And look here. It's growing aerial roots toward the humid moss. In the moss, there are roots, because it won't fall out. They grow succulents and cactus, to be honest with you. Well, more so succulent plants love being in sphagnum moss. You would, you would think it'd be totally different, but it's not. They love being in this, and they will grow healthy, and actually for you as a home grower, will find it much easier to care for them packed in this stuff. And they'll become more quick, they'll quickly become more specimen plants for you, and maybe flower, maybe bloom, whatever they do. It also dropped a leaf, so I'm just going to stick it on there, because I know they grow right from leaves. And this will be a cute little bonsai. I mean, if you ever made one of these for somebody, this would be a cute, easy-to-care-for bonsai that you would they wouldn't have to worry about. they just dunk it once in a while and soak the medium and let it go, and that's it. Just leave it. So that's doing really well. I would pull out a few more things, but it's just like everything's so packed in right now. Um, oh, and it's for people who I, um, I sent plants to for the 200 subscriber giveaway. I hope you guys received them, and I hope they came in great condition. I know two of you got back to me, a Bran and then Joe. He, you said that uh, you got them, and they're in great shape. I saw some pictures. Thank you for the pictures. I really appreciated it, especially the cat, a Bran. That was really cute, having the cat photobomb. Um, that was awesome. The other thing I want to say, too, before I go, is my Orchid Society, this is actually going out to all the subscribers and all who watch me, Facebook, YouTube, if you are in the tri-state area and around May 2nd, if you have nothing to do and you are an orchid nut and you have a passion for orchids or just like them and want to get out, my Orchid Society is throwing its first annual, well, no, it's an annual, oh, not first, oh, God, my God, annual auction uh, for orchid plants. Uh, we are going to have it in Princeton, New Jersey, right on the main street. Well, it's right off of Nassau Street. It's actually 45 Stockton Street. It's right where the big memorial is for the war memorial. It's in the um, Princeton Senior Resource Center. Uh, the nice thing is next door, there's going to be a gardening thing going on, so you guys can go back and forth. And even if you're not really a big orchid nut or you want to bring your spouse or a friend and they're not orchid friends or orchid nuts, you can go to there, take a look around, put an auction in, put a bid in on a plant, or go to the Buy It Now table pick up a plant, and then go down the street and walk the beautiful historic town of Princeton, have lunch, just walk around, go shopping. So it's in a beautiful area. It's going to be in a beautiful time of year because May is, May is one fine damn month to be outside. Trust me. And I hate to quote um, Morgan Freeman. Um, it'll be from 1 to 4 o'clock. And here's the other thing, too. Since I'm going to be there, if you are a subscriber of mine from Facebook, or YouTube, the first three people that come up to me and say, hey, I know you from YouTube, or I know you from Facebook, you're growing things, or I know you from Useless News, for Christ's sake, I will hand out a mystery plant. That's right, I will be handing out a mystery plant. 
So if you come up to me and say, hey, Chris, I know you. I, I watch your channel. The first three people, they'll get a mystery plant. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're just going to have to pop in, say hello, look around, shop, find me, and then see where it goes from there. So with that said, uh, please come by. Uh, we put a lot of work into this. Uh, the society members put a lot of work into this, and I want this society to kind of grow more. So if uh, you happen to be in the area at the time, or you want to get out and just do something on a beautiful Saturday, then come out. Enjoy it. And I hope that I see you guys there. Other than that, guys, um, I think that's it. So you guys have a great day, and uh, ha also, if I haven't said it before, have a happy Easter.